This is for the nerds. This is for the brainiacs. This is what we deserve. Go ahead and play it back. You ain't gonna touch me. You're not gonna do nothing. You are not above me. I bet you wish you was me. I know that I know. out here blocking people from games and scoring recreationals like it's some kind of wet t-shirt contest. When I found out that Garrett had rated me a six on his system, I felt cheap, like a dirty streetwalker. What's up, guys? What's up, guys? Shut your dirty little poser mouth. That's my line. Dog, I can't tell what the algorithm likes. What, you are the only guy who is allowed to say what's up, guys? Literally, yes. I've been wholeheartedly obnoxious in my pursuit of scammers. Calling me the scammer is like calling Robin Hood the sheriff. I don't know, Mark. I think maybe the better analogy is you're the sheriff and he's the vigilante. Et tu, Brute? Berkey, oh, Berkey's so full of shit. Like, he runs a training academy for low to mid stakes cash grinders, and he's not willing to play me heads up for like 10% of our net worth? Scammer. Nick Airball is perfectly within his rights to trash talk me or humiliate me. He could kick me in the dick, but if he goes that route, I'm gonna knock his chip stack over and. You can interpret that however you like. My respect just shot up for you, 5X. I'm pretty much a poker god, you know? I'm an intuitive genius. I was once inside a poker pussy so sweet, she actually smelled like water. She was that well hydrated. Yep. Felt disrespectful to my existing children to nut. She was that hot. And you know, this is a true story. Wow, you're just gonna share my text messages, Berkey? What next, my nudes? Don't worry, Doug, your poker pussy is safe. Do you guys think that transgenders are real? Keep it together, j -Bo. You don't have to comment on everything. You have 50 million earnings. You don't have to. You know, I'm an old-fashioned guy. I didn't even realize what I had said had been offensive. And if it was offensive, I do apologize. <laughs> Not to the person I said it to, though. She's still a piece of shit. What were the big penis? <laughs> what is poppin', everybody? And welcome back to another special episode of the Only Friends Podcast. Well, you know... I'm here with my only friends and my boy Tortua. What's it was happening? back in the building. Oh my God, was that amazing? Yo, shout out to Caitlin. God, she kills it every time. I I made it. I got I got impersonated by Caitlin. Uh, Caitlin, I I'm I feel like I can die now. You, you can die and now. And die a happy man. She gave me way more hair than I actually had. I so. can't believe you're saying that before the T Swift concert. Oh man! I know. <laughs> uh, okay, die tomorrow. Die tomorrow. Yeah. Wait, you gotta live for mm -hmm. today. The concert's tonight. Tonight, baby. I'm going straight to the strip after this thing. Oh my god, it's yep. a party. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be a party. I'm, Can't I'm, wait. I'm excited for you, man. Man, amazing. amazing. <laughs> yeah, a lot of crazy things going on, huh? Well, a, lot, a lot of crazy things going on these days. Mm -hmm. Who knows? I mean, um, we do. We did sell another academy. You no, know, we right? did. We do have. To, just to let everybody know, <laughs> we do sell uh, Academy seats for uh, a reasonable price, I think. And uh, yeah, so we do we do have uh, some seats available still uh, on April twenty or sorry April eight. This is hard. I see why Berkey screws this up all the time. Uh, <laughs> April fifteenth to the eighteenth, uh, we have the Poker Out Loud Academy. It is going to be the last time we do the Poker Out Loud uh, version of the Academy, and um, you can go to academy.solferwide.io for that one and get more info. And we also have a tournament academy coming up, and that will be May 24th to the 27th. I got that one right. And uh, it's going to be he headed by Matt Hunt, who is our tournament specialist. Uh, he'll, he can also tell you how great, um, where to get some great sunglasses. <laughs> and, <laughs> um, but yeah, actually, we just sold another one for that one. So uh, they are going fast. Thanks, Doug, for, uh, you know, promoting it. Yeah, if you want to clip this out, get the rest sold. We appreciate mm -hmm. yeah, it. Yeah, appreciate it. <laughs> right. So go to uh, academy.solferwide.io uh, and uh, click on the top uh, banner if you want more info on the MTT Academy. All right, all right. Well, today we have a special guest in the building. Okay, real quick. I love how you say special correctly when we have a reason to say special correctly. Because she's special. Yes. 
Don't make me say it again. <laughs> <laughs> we are joined today by Stephanie Chung. How are you doing today? Good, how are you? I'm good. Welcome I'm to the good. podcast. Aw, thanks. Welcome to Only Friends. I do feel special. <laughs> <laughs> and I have That's no right. reason to feel special. <laughs> you have every reason to feel special. Absolutely. You just crushed them at the PLO. I would not say crush. Poker go. No, no, I would you, not say crush. I have been cashed essentially min cashed four tournaments that's crushing that's, them that's good how that's, many that's, my, that's, I, that's how i play tournaments I'm a, min, I'm a min cash specialist as well to totally judge i was not going for the min cash i did no. run pretty bad until <laughs> <laughs> right so how many tournaments did you play out of the series i played all of them except for the two bounties and fk lost count i think that was something so you played six tournaments and cashed four of them. Yeah. That's very wow. hard to do. Yeah. That's really easy. Six, yeah. Against some stiff competition. Uh, it was, yeah, sure, we can say that. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> Amazing. How was the, was this the first time you played high stakes PLO tournaments? It was the first time I played anything higher than 3K. Really? Yes. And how did you feel about the experience as well as, call it, the difference in strategy from PLO tournaments versus deeper stacked PLO cash. So it was relative. I mean, I did late reg all of the tournaments. So we, which that we can get into a whole different thing about. Um, so the strategy wasn't actually all that. Start all the tournaments 40 BP. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't actually all that different. It almost didn't even. <laughs> <laughs> I guess before we get into oh, yeah. like, all this poker stuff, uh, can you give us like just a little bit of your background and uh, you know, what you do away from poker and sure. Um, kind of it depends on how far you want to go into like my PLO or into my poker background, like going all the way back to when I was like yeah. four and playing. You play poker. poker at four? Well, it depends if you count like the trips, like the family ski that trips. Counts. That yeah, it counts. Yeah, <laughs> With my uh, family, the ski trips and like we would play poker by like the fireplace, but my family didn't know like what a flush was. But my brother also likes to like lie when he doesn't know the answer. <laughs> so, so it sounds like you were good at game selecting back then. <laughs> Well, so he, what, I learned poker from my brother technically, and he used to That's say- That's not a good start. Also, he would tell me that the, the, a flush was like all even cards. And all even cards. So and, two, four, six, eight, ten. Yeah. Exactly. Two, four, six, eight, ten is a flush. And oh, it's, it didn't matter what the suits were. No, no. Oh, yeah. okay. So basically, if you just had deuce, four, six, eight, ten, Vadugi, that's a flush. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Got yeah. it. And a straight is like all in a row. That's, well, that's correct. <laughs> that so. is correct. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Well, he couldn't get his way out of wait, that one. Did he, <laughs> did he assume that like queen, king, ace, deuce, three was a straight? Oh, I don't remember that far back. Or did he like... No, I don't think so. Okay. Because that... I've, I've heard really stories of people doing that where they think a straight is just five cards mm -hmm. in a row where queen, king, ace, and then most logically deuce three, and they would think, oh, straight, five cards in a row. <laughs> oh, so no, if he, no, so if he thought that uh, a flush was all the even cards and a straight was all the cards in a row, I bet he got really confused on what a straight flush was. <laughs> Probably, I, I don't remember that far back. We were like four and yeah, six. Yeah, right, and right. So, <laughs> I don't remember. But besides that, what do you do outside of poker? Um, so I actually do uh, medical research. I do cancer, re or... I do medical research. Um, back when I was, in, even before I moved to Vegas, I did cancer research, and then I actually transferred over to Vegas just a few years ago. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that you were in Cleveland. I have a question for you. Yes. Okay. Where is Pittsburgh located? It's only two and a half hours of Or oh, But, like, what region would you call it inside the United <laughs> States of America? <laughs> uh, Midwest. Thank oh! you! It is I give it up. It, it is. Up. This so, is, Steph, it was very nice having you on the this show. This conversation we'll is. Um, <laughs> it, this is amazing. Oh, um, thank no. you so much for I that. I only briefly, oh. like, skin, skimmed over that, but I forget <laughs> who was on which side for that. Well, us people from Pittsburgh. <laughs> are not on that side because we're from Pittsburgh and we know where we are. Wait, so what Midwest. did you guys say? What? What did you guys say? We say it's uh, e <laughs> east, east Coast, not Midwest. No, I, no, I like no. Mid-Atlantic. Wait, right. so you from Pittsburgh said that it was East Coast? That's what well, they east. think. It's in the East. Pennsylvania chops it up, so Pittsburgh right. is Midwest and Philly is East Coast. No, uh, no, no, no way. Welcome no to way. Geography with Steph. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm I mean, so, so, this is the best episode I, we've ever listen, had. Listen, the Midwest starts in Ohio. So I 
grew up half my life in New Jersey and half my life in Ohio, which okay. is eight hours away from each other. So I grew up on the East Coast, but then lived half my life in the Midwest. Yeah. So you, yeah, you li <laughs> right. You lived in the Midwest, which is Ohio and Pittsburgh. <laughs> so there's got to, I know, but there's got to be a line somewhere, right? Yeah, and that's the middle of Pennsylvania. No, no, it's the border of Pennsylvania and Ohio. <laughs> I, I, I totally you can't, you can't just. To have was they're in the same division. You can't, have, one no, <laughs> this you can't have what are you talking about? They're in the same NFL division. Okay, so so Baltimore's in the Midwest. Well no. Yeah. All right, back. <laughs> All right, enough All right. about that. All right, enough about <laughs> enough about finding out that Pittsburgh is indeed in the Midwest. Ironically, I actually played my first PLO hand in Pittsburgh at Rivers. Did you really? I did. I've been there. Yeah. Yeah. Nice so, little, uh, nice little place. Because yeah. uh, Ohio's casino, uh, uh, the gambling wasn't legalized until 2012, mm -hmm. so I actually started off playing at Rivers. In Right. See, yeah. gambling illegal in the Midwest, gambling not illegal. <laughs> you, were, you have to go to Pennsylvania, you have to, go to Pittsburgh, Coast. To, to the East Coast. So, <laughs> so going uh, back. Wait, um, so what about Maryland then? Because Maryland Live also didn't open. Right, Maryland's on the East Coast. But you just said that gambling was legalized in, was in the legal. East Coast, yeah. No, but Maryland Live didn't open until later. Oh, sure. Well, they, they, they moved over. East Coast, <laughs> East Coast adjacent. <laughs> so oh, your background yeah. is in science and medical. What drew you to cancer research? Um, so I actually, you know, I'm Asian, so my mom's a doctor. <laughs> 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 so she was trying to push me in that direction. Yep. So in college, I had a um, biomedical engineering background. Okay. I gra I, Where'd you go to college? Uh, Case Western in Ohio, in Cleveland. Okay. Yep. In the Midwest. <laughs> yeah. that was undoubtedly the midwest we knew that um i knew that i wasn't going to go to med school though but i did like my uh, degree i did like what i was studying i was offered a position um and i like the research um i actually back in high school via my mom uh was doing research and i actually got a publication on the cover of the journal of neurosurgery Wow, oh, that's, awesome. that's awesome. That's really a cool. Yeah, sick brag. There. Yeah. <laughs> that's what too good for the public community. I'll tell you what. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just loved what I was doing, so I kind of kept going down that route and was offered a few like different research positions here and there. But I, I always had like poker intermixed with that because a lot of times I would be like working on a research grant, and then when the research grant would end, sometimes I would be like offered a position, but mm -hmm. then I would kind of like it would be a good opportunity to kind of take a break, and then I would like go to playing poker full time for a little bit then i'd get sick of kind of like grinding poker yeah. full time so then i'd go back to doing research, <laughs> research so is grants. it like clini clinical trials that kind of stuff and double blind all that yeah stuff? yeah exactly mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. research grant is basically where they give you a bunch of money to try to learn something right yeah so yeah so the <laughs> nih can like award grants for like a specific project mm -hmm. um, the position i actually have right now isn't grant dependent so it's working actually on a lot of different projects at once Mm -hmm. I'm curious, what actually goes into being like a researcher on like such an impactful? What goes into it, or like yeah. why do I do it? No, or... like what goes into like being a researcher on like such um, an impactful area like cancer? So there's like so many different positions you could have as a researcher. I mean, you could be like the physician principal investigator, where you're the one like that's coming up with the ideas and like leading it and leading your team and things like that. Or you could just be like the person that's like doing like the grunt work and like collecting the data mm -hmm. and like working with the patient and drawing blood for them and things like that, collecting their vital signs and whatnot. You could be the one that's like actually the pharmaceutical companies that are like presenting the drugs or like coming up with the drugs and then giving it out to the hospitals and things like that. I actually worked with a software company that was also doing research and I actually absolutely hated working for industry. Okay. Um, that was a very short lived position that <laughs> I had because I loved doing clinical research for the a philanthropy of it and for like helping people and things like that like i kind of had i had poker to do like the money side of things mm -hmm. and i liked doing the clinical research and the medical research to like help people and so when i did uh worked in industry for a little while for the software company um that just and like i would go on conferences <clears throat> presenting the research and things like that and then i'd go back to our booth where the sales people of our company were like trying to sell like sell the product mm -hmm. that kind of like like hurt a little bit inside because i liked like doing things about like 
you know, the company and like the research and like how it's like innovative and things like that, but not trying to sell. The product. Right. The right. incentives yeah. between right, right, the company right. and uh, mm -hmm. that side of things are misaligned. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Like, oh, how can we get rich? You're like, well, I just want to help people. Exactly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why I quickly left industry and went straight back to working for a hospital. Yeah. And then is that's that when awesome. you moved into neurology? Because you do neurology research. So well, no. Right? Yeah. I was at the hospital in Cleveland for a little while and for personal reasons I ended up leaving Cleveland and mm -hmm. they have branches out in Vegas and in Florida and they both offer me positions actually so the um, branch out in Vegas only does neuro research. Oh, gotcha. I will say like, if you I can wanted to, to play, Vegas and play poker and, and also do research. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was actually very ironic that the two places that they have uh, branches in are in Vegas and in Florida so ironically and right. the branch in Florida is like right down the street from Hollywood and mm -hmm. that's like probably the next place that I go to the most often because of all the PLO tournaments that yeah. they always run. I mean run. poker and neurology go hand in hand. <laughs> <laughs> well if there was a place to move to play high stakes PLO or just like mid to high stakes PLO cash it would probably be Florida. Yeah, yeah. that's there's no <laughs> lies told there. Well, so when I was making a whole list of pros and cons because they had both offered me positions um one of the like leading factors in regards to like comparing the cash games between the two, Hollywood actually has recently switched to five card PLO. Yeah, um, a lot like, of it. All those stupid people. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> shots, five shots. Boom. Shots fired. Shots, shots, fired. <laughs> shots fired at those euros that I used to go to Maryland Live and play uh, PLO there because PL the PLO action in Maryland Live was pretty sick. Um, but then the Euros, sorry, Euros, came and switched all the games in Maryland Live to five card. And so I stopped going there. Um, but Maryland Live used to be like its own little bubble. And then eventually when um, MGM opens in Baltimore also, like the Baltimore, Maryland area used to be its own little bubble of five card. Um, but then all, apparently like those Euros maybe a few years ago all moved down to Florida. And now Florida runs nothing but five card PL. Too, and you only so. play four? Yeah. Yeah. I only so how did you rediscover poker? Like you said, you played it as young when you were young at like four years old. Oh well, that doesn't count. I was just saying like, <laughs> that's how I like first technically discovered poker. Yeah. I mean, I was like watching it on TV, the like, same as everybody else. And then I remember like one of my uh, friends that was a high schooler was just like put on this like random twenty dollar tournament, but none of my friends knew how to play and things like that. And so it was just like me and him. And I remember he like technically had like the most chips i had the second most number of chips so he like offered me my money back for the 20 dollars while he <laughs> takes the rest of the money it was obviously like a total hustle for like the, the you know chop the chip chop or whatever and obviously i was like totally happy to take it so, after, <laughs> so that was like my one other incident in high school and then when i went off to college like there was like this facebook group of like everyone getting to know everybody and one of my friends who's actually still really good he only plays online uh shout out to zach back if anyone knows him um he sent me a message about like he had heard about some uh home games that were running again like you know super mini games, like 25 cent 50 cent that kind of thing um that he had invited me to but it because I went to like a pretty geeky school, like, you know, Case Western, um, it was not about the money, but it was about like a lot of people just like talking strategy and things mm -hmm. like that. And I met some other people there later on, like in the other years. Um, shout out to Ken Poe, if anyone knows him, but, like he goes, travels around and he just won a ring. So, oh, awesome. Congratulations um, to him. But yeah, so I just got more and more into that. Um, we started making trips to like Turning Stones and ATO oh, yes. Casino. Mm -hmm. and I've been there many times. Yep, yep. Yeah. I think they're just having a uh, circuit there now, right? Oh, yep. they do right they now? Are. Nice. Yeah, I think the main Definitely. event's like right now. Yeah, it's like a 17 Man, I wish I was made there. up there. Yeah. I would love to go back. Uh, yeah, I think Apollo was there, right? Uh, Apollo's everywhere. Yeah, you know, he's, no, East Coast. he's everywhere <laughs> on the East Coast, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah. what drew you to the great four card game as opposed to the two one? Yeah, yeah. so my friend that I was just mentioning, um, Ken Po, um, sent me some videos saying that I think you'd be interested in it. There's like a lot more like analysis and math involved and things like that. And he sent me some training videos um, from Bill Galfon and Vanessa Selps. And so I have to, you know, say thanks to them also. And that, that just kind of got me hooked. Um, played my first game over at Rivers. Um, and I remember... Oh, so that was the first time you played PLO? Was I believe it? so, yeah. At, at Rivers? Nice. Yeah. And I'll never forget, like, the first hand that I was dealt. Um, 
I don't know how much you want to get into like these stupid bags. No, I don't want to hear this. Absolutely. Please. We're here to talk. Okay, so at the freshman cash game, the home game, when I was still playing like 25 cent, 50 cent, there was this one guy who is right now the tournament director at Cleveland. I am guaranteed he's watching this, by the way. Um, <laughs> he got really mad because there was a hand where him and the game that was running that home game um, got all in. I was the one dealing the cards. And they, I wasn't paying attention to what exactly was going on. I was just kind of tuning them out. They agreed to run it like three or four times or something like that. So I run it out for them. One of the, the guy that was running the game, the home game, apparently was like a huge underdog in the hand and ends mm -hmm. up winning it like all three or four oh times, however many times they run yeah. it. The guy that's currently the tournament director in Cleveland got so pissed off <laughs> was like how the hell did you win it like all three or four yeah, times yeah, right, like how right. did this happen mm -hmm. um leaves the game never ever comes back to that home game like <laughs> rants at me on facebook and this was like what 20 years ago or so i don't remember however many 10 years ago yeah um and i'm like how the fuck could i have rigged this game like i barely even know the yeah, guy that, like right. how could yeah. i have rigged it so that's that, well when people get unlucky and that they want to they want to like validate or you know try to figure out like you know, rationalize why they lost. So they go to like, oh, I must be cheated because I got unlucky or, you know. <laughs> right, right. So he never shows up. But the next time I see him is what, like five years later in mm -hmm. Pittsburgh? I don't know. That's amazing. Him and his friend so are like. he's at the table? Yeah, he's at the table. And I hadn't seen You're him like, in like Hi, five I'm years. back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I wasn't sure if he recognized me because he was so drunk. And this was my first time ever playing PLO. And it got dealt aces. And I obviously didn't know PLO, but people tell me, oh, you know, aces aren't nearly as good in PLO. Right. right so i think i like raised a little bit um the his he min raised his friend min raises so i just flat he min raises again his flat min raises again i have no idea what's going on i have <laughs> a, lot of cooking. a lot of cooking. this is this is pot limit right it's yeah this is pot limit <laughs> and we're all min raising. this is plo and i'm like well i was told that aces aren't as good as in so you were, yeah you didn't want to get too aggressive then this right? is my first hand yeah. okay. i don't really know what's going on Amazing. so i just folded oh no no <laughs> And oh of, wow and, and of course what the flop a story comes, twist like, i didn't see that coming and of course the flop comes like ace nine three oh, or something no. like that oh man oh man and my friend ken po is also at the table and i tell and i text this to him and he just goes like <laughs> <laughs> send you the face palm emoji yeah. yeah oh man well you know you learned your lesson. I bet you never folded aces and PLO again. It kind of sounds like him and his friend were trying to middle you in the hand, honestly. I know. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's what I was that. that. No, honestly, that's exactly what I was thinking, too. I was like, oh, they're like, oh, this girl's back. We're going to get her this time and then just keep clicking it back. <laughs> no, no, I think they were just super drunk. Too. Yeah, I mean, pro probably, probably. Yeah. Oh, man. All right. So how often do you play nowadays? So I'm like, I've been back and forth, especially since moving to Vegas. Like I mm -hmm. took a little bit of a break because of personal things when I was back in Cleveland. Um, and then when I moved to Vegas, I was like taking care of just like moving stuff and things like that. And then I played more like doing the usual grinding. Mm -hmm. um, so you normally play, I guess, the places that have PLO is mainly Aria and Wynn maybe? Aria yep. and Wynn are the only two the options only two. for 5-5. Right. Five, five. Plus. So do you, you prefer one or the other? You go to both? or I've only been going to Aria because mm -hmm. I was initially told that Wynn only runs like bomb pot games. Oh, okay. But I only recently learned now or like I'm relearning that the bomb pot only happens once around. Yeah. And mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It's every dealer change. Yeah, every dealer change. And that it's the one two game that it happens every hand or something like that. And that it's actually on Bravo if it's going to be every hand. Yeah, yeah it, it, it's that. it's called a bomb pot game if they or something like that. Mm -hmm. PLO bomb pot game if they just gonna play every hand. But, but I heard that like sometimes that game turns into a five five game. Or um, pretty much I feel like they have PLO running every day. Okay. Like I'm pretty sure they just have like straight PLO and just bomb pots um on dealer changes. Okay, yeah, that's not too bad. I'd be I'd play that game. Yeah. I mean the Aria game's been fine though, so. I love win. <laughs> <laughs> Go to the win. Go Guapo, to the... Guapo went to the win uh, yesterday, didn't you, Guapo? We I got did. you in there. Yeah, I was uh, sitting next to Connie, and the live streets are much different than yeah, online. Yeah, you were telling me, yeah, a little different than online, huh? You were telling yeah, me a few, just a little. few hands got, and got a little wild. <laughs> well, we made money, so it's good. All right, Guapo, see? You, so you're going to go back? Uh, going after yeah, the probably show. pretty soon. <laughs> right after the podcast. <laughs> He's going right after the show. All right, Guapo's in the live stream. Let's go. Let's go. That's great. So, 
correct me if I'm wrong, but you were on Joey's stream a couple times, right? No, so I was only on that one time during the whole Robbie thing for like a few minutes, and that's when I like did not talk very well. <laughs> <laughs> I have like a phobia of talking. Like... You're doing great today. <laughs> Is, was Joey's great game of PLO? Is that the reason that got you into it? Yeah, like, yeah, that was like, like I just have to talk on it. Like I'm passionate about PLO, same as mm -hmm. Joey. So that's that was awesome. like made me come out of like my little comfort bubble and like yeah well it seems like you've been doing that a couple times um in this plo series recently um what like what made you want to just take the shot and go um like, i mean i like i said i love plo it's so rare that you ever find uh any series that has like even more than one plo so i'm always like looking on hand and mob like down the list filtering it by like any pot limit tournament and then looking to see if any series has more than one plo game going mm -hmm. uh, more than one plo kind of rare and pretty much the only time there's ever a series like that is at hollywood which is why i that was like my two <laughs> options for even moving right um and so this series was like i really really want to play this series but i've never played in a tournament like higher than 5k or higher than 3k before which I have a mini rant about that is that the World Series needs to do a better job of that. That's like really tilting. There you go, Jack. But, you listen. <laughs> I mean, I, add some more pillow tournaments that you know every every person can play. Yeah, the last time they run a tournament between fifteen hundred and ten k was back in like two thousand sixteen. They ran a three k plo eight and. That was the last time in yeah. 2016. I feel like the three Ks and the five Ks are, not, are mixed now. This oh, is round they're and round. all mixed. Yeah. Not There's counting, not a straight PLO. Not counting the three K PLO six max, which I'm mm -hmm. always hesitant to play because I feel like that's pretty like online pro. Maybe because it's six max. Because it's six. Yeah. I'm not a huge six max person. Gotcha. I'm like always borderline to play that. Mm -hmm. But I it's probably good at the play. series. Serious PLO. Get, get in there. I probably will play it eventually, but I just... I yeah, I was, I was going to ask you about, like, the series. Did you see any anything? That, so there's there's not a lot of tournaments for you to choose from this upcoming series? That's what, no, or, that's what I'm saying. Just that one? Yeah. Including this series, since 2016, not counting the 3K PLO 6 Max, there's never been anything between wow. 1,500 and 10K. Man, that, that's amazing i know it's so so then the one. the poker go uh series comes up and you're like i guess i gotta take a shot yeah yeah so um, for sure i wanted to play the first 5k and just see how it goes see how soft it was i expected the field to be pretty decent but i asked a bunch of people for advice like a bunch everyone gave me like a bunch of like varying opinions and it was mm, pretty unanimous so you, in that yeah. anyone that like all the like more experienced players and regs and things like that were like uh, I'm not sure if you should play it. I can see pros and cons to it. Like it'll probably be soft, but if you've never played like higher than 3K before, then you might not be as comfortable with it, and you might play a little bit. Too and you much. ignored all that shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he said, I'm I, getting I, in there. I mean, I, I was, I was still very borderline, but yeah, yeah. then if it wasn't for the other friends that have never played PLO there before. You go. <laughs> <laughs> Get in there, Steph. <laughs> so you took the Twitter to sell some action. Like, what, what was that process like for you? For selling action? Yeah. So I didn't sell any action for the 5K. Okay. Um, and then because I did okay in the... I didn't expect anyone to have any interest anyways. Mm -hmm. um, and then because I did okay in the 5K, um, like, it was, it was a little bit better than a mid-cash. So run us through, uh, yeah, what you... What, like, how, the, how that tournament went. So you, you ended up... You said you min, oh, it was better than a mid-cash? I got 12th for 20K. Well, for 20K, and how many people? Uh, 200. 200 people? Wow. And they should have gotten more than that, but there was just such a wait list for it. Like, so mm -hmm. I showed up at 2, like, right after the second, uh, right after the first break um, to get a seat, and I ended up having to wait something like 30 to 40 minutes or something like mm -hmm. that. So they well, just because they have such limited table space in the poker Right, games. exactly, yeah. yeah. What, um, what was first in that? I have a bet. Yeah, 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 I think it was 220. 220? Yeah, something along those lines. Wow. Yeah, the turnout for the PLO tournaments was definitely going to be a shot in the dark because talking to people about it, the people had no idea it was going to get this big. Yeah. Especially because it was, even though it was the first one, when it comes to PLO action in general, it's relatively secluded and not that popular, yeah. so to speak, in like relation to the no limit stuff that happens. But Getting 200 people 
were extremely obviously surprised by it, and it sounds like it was a pretty good spot to take a shot if you're going to take a shot. Plan. Yeah, yeah it sounds like maybe maybe there was a lot of people with your your same mindset, right? It's like I I want to play PLO tournaments, but there are none, so I I guess I just have to, you know, fuck up and play 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 a yeah, bigger when, buy-in. When you travel and you play PLO terms, you see like a lot of the same sort of people. Mm -hmm. So I actually a lo expected a lot of them to be there, and a lot of people surprisingly didn't show up. I don't know if it's because of bankroll or because of traveling or things like that. Right. So I feel like the next one could get an even bigger pool like maybe yeah. maybe feel is getting a little traction yeah yeah, yeah that would i be mean great it's not surprising at all because i know like cash game feel too and it's mm -hmm. definitely like you know i mean it was a, it was pretty big though like oh yeah for sure 5k being the smallest buy-in and that was only one 5k i believe yeah yeah it was yeah. definitely big so, i can only see it get bigger though because yeah. i don't see any of those people leaving and i know a lot of people that could have been there that weren't there too. no absolutely yeah. after people see the outcome of what just happened there'll definitely be more yeah. so you played six events Cast four of them for seventy two thousand, I believe. Like what was the first, what was, <laughs> Yeah, what was the cash for the five k? Uh, the five k was twenty k. So you cashed for twenty k. So then, so like, did, you didn't at that point before you cashed, you didn't know if you were going to play anymore. And then when right. you and then right, so then you have this big, you have this nice score, right, twenty thousand dollars score, right. and you you probably feel a little bit more a little confidence, right? You know, you're like, I can play in this field. Yeah, it was pretty so now soft you're like, enough, okay, yeah. I want to, uh, I want to play more of these or bigger buy-ins. So then right. that's when you decide to maybe try to reach out to the community. And exactly. See if you could sell. Yeah. So the first post that I made about that, um, there were a lot of people that was like, congrats and things like, and I don't have, I don't really do much social media. I don't, mm -hmm. I'm not looking for most, much social media or anything like that. Right. So when I got like a surprising number of responses, I was like, oh, maybe there are people that might actually be interested if i was to sell action and it wasn't really even selling action from like a financial standpoint because i could have technically if you go by like even like that two percent rule or whatever mm -hmm. like only putting in two percent like i could totally play and just see and have 100 percent of myself but it was almost more of like confidence booster like should i be playing especially because like i've been considering playing the 10k plo and plo8 for the last six or seven years um, it's always like whenever I make a World Series schedule of like all the tournaments I'm going to be playing, the 10K PLO and the 10K PLO8 are always on my maybe list, and I have not played it for the last six or seven the years. The 10K okay, PLO fun. is a championship event, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. They call it a championship. Champion. Call it. I mean, what I mean by that is like I think the championship, championship events are freeze outs. Oh. So like you only get the only get one bullet. I think yeah. when it comes to the 10 like the 10Ks for like call it the championship event because like the 10K six max. Uh, during the WSOP is like a one bullet type of thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so tell us about your like overall experience of playing in these um, big buy and small field events. So, I mean, when I like look back at it, I still think it's like surreal to, it almost didn't feel like a big buy in event. Right. Like I still, whether it has to do with like the field, whether it has to do with like the atmosphere or like, considering i've never played in anything higher than 3k it didn't feel anything like, that's good it's, it's so that's bizarre yeah. i just i don't know why like, I, I have some experience of this as well uh, i recently played my first 25k i played a few 10ks kind of my first um and it's like it's just the game we're just playing the game that we love exactly yeah and it's like it's just so like it's easy yeah like it's just like this is the game that we love and like whatever i don't care who's sitting on the other side it's like all right the crazy thing is that it's not surprising or it's not as surprising like in the moment to have that mindset i thought that at some point it was going to crash on me after mm -hmm. the facts like looking at the numbers and things like that and it still hasn't yet and that's what's kind of surprising to me. I think yeah. you're just built like, for this. You're built for yeah. these high, high stakes, <laughs> you know, PLO. Yeah. We're going to see you at the Triton events. <laughs> I don't know about that. I'm definitely going to play every 10K from this point on. Ooh, like, oh, right. Right. Let's, Let's go. go. I'm not here, at least. That's uh, awesome. We'll see. I love it. Yeah. So why haven't you, why didn't you play bigger prior? Um, so I had like a group of people, like, you know, the, Dan. Advisory board. <laughs> sure. Never to was the it the council? Board. The the council of Dan's? <laughs> <laughs> the the Cleveland gang. That Cleveland council. That mm -hmm. I do not confer with anymore. <laughs> they're, from, they're from the Midwest, like yeah. you know, anywhere outside the Midwest, you should really get your council from. But you know, not not the Midwest. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can. I have a little rant of spiel about that. So. <laughs> let's, let's hear it. Now or later? Right Whatever now. you want. Let's get it. Well, so um, I feel like any city, town, anywhere, like no matter how big the city is, if it has only one casino, 
then it's going to have like a very particular atmosphere, right? Because as long as it only has one casino, then you're going to see, see the same people over and mm -hmm. over again, right? right? Like all the regs are going to know each other. All the players are going to know each other. So if you see those same people over and over again, you're going to have like this atmosphere. And I think it relates exactly to like high school. Like oh, Everyone's mm -hmm. going to be like immature. Everyone's going to be like wanting to be in the in crowd everyone's there's going to want there's clicks and there's, that kind exactly of stuff. there's clicks yeah. popular and gossip's mm -hmm. always going to get around right this and person did this this person did that did you hear this exactly and, yeah. and it just being the only girl plo player in that like general it was just yeah well that's that, that, that <laughs> i mean yeah think about it because like you know uh women in poker it's growing it seems to be growing which is great um but like you know, m most of them probably play No Limit Hold'em, yeah. right? right? So, like, to, to be a, a female poker player and then a specifically PLO, you got to be, like, the only <laughs> one around. That's yeah. the thing. Like, when other girls, like, share their experiences of, like, trying to, like, about how much they've shit they've gone through and things like that, or these, like, instances, like, I guess initially I had, like, this thought of, like, it's, you know, you just got to suck it up. You just got to toughen it up. I'm not mm -hmm. saying that... I'm not in support of all of these. Like, I'm probably like the least um, female activist type person, only because of like, I, of like, that's how I've like gotten to this point. Like, mm -hmm. I'm, yeah. it's just I'm, I've gotten so used to it. Right, like, right. You know, yeah. like, like it's unfortunate, but just like whatever. Yeah, I'm just yeah. used to like, okay, that's just what we have to go through, just suck it up kind of thing, you mm -hmm. know? Like, mm -hmm. um, this is just like one example, but I remember like hearing through the grapevines that like this one reg at the table was like calling me a four letter C, the ironic word that Matt decided mm -hmm. to just throw out there, yeah. you know? And, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, what are you going to do about it? Like, I can't, it's not like I can do anything but thing about it. I just got to suck it up, you know? Like, yeah. You just ask him why he's such a loser. <laughs> you, know, you can always do that. That's that's <laughs> that's yeah. always on the agenda. Right. Hey, why are you such a but, loser? And, yeah, you know, and it's just like it, it shouldn't always be up to you to do something about it. Yeah, you know, and it's there. like you know, like that's why we encourage other people, you know, at the table that like you see something like going on like this that somebody else has to set them straight. Especially in tight knit right. communities, like yeah. PLO world is, I'm sure, is pretty kind of tight knit community for the most part. Mm -hmm. Except and that, in, like a one casino like city, like no one's going to say anything because everyone wants to be the cool kid. Right. Like, you know exactly. I mean? that, that, that's the whole going back to the whole high school thing. Right? Right. Right. It's like why some, sometimes the bullies thrive because nobody wants to step up to the bully because then they get bullied. Right, it's not right. just high school. That stuff happens everywhere. In the public community, who knows, you know? Yeah. Right. Twitter, who knows? Yeah. So but that's why it was such a reality check. Like I thought that's what like the entire poker community was no, like, right. and that like mm -hmm. poker community is just like the bottom two percent of like <laughs> yeah, they're just scum. <laughs> like, yeah. So that's why it was like unbelievable when I moved out to Vegas, and I was like, oh my gosh, maybe that it's actually possible that like there are good poker players, that, yeah. like good good people, people in good the poker. People, <laughs> good people. There actually are. I'm still like wondering if it's just like people fake being nice or if people are actually like genuinely nice i bet it's a mix of both yeah. i mean but, but, but i think that the general i mean usually like the the assholes are are, are the, the loudest sometimes but yeah. um you know i'm gonna um, reserve judgment because it's still early i've only moved here a few months ago yeah i mean <laughs> the, over, the overall poker community i think as i think it, the, the more you get integrated with them you, you'll find that there are a lot of a lot of good people doing a lot of good things. It's kind of just yeah. like the way it is as a whole. Like the majority of people are inherently good, and then it's easier to see the outliers in the negative because the negative speaks so much more volume than the standard of being good, right? Where I operate under the standpoint of most people are inherently good. So when you see like the bad actor type, it's like, oh man, like didn't you see that this person was this or said something along those lines? Where in reality, it's like, okay, you can't really necessarily control this one person, but there are so many other people that are inherently good right. that are not necessarily as scrutinized because that's just the inherent standard is how we live as people. Right. Most people are inherently good. Right, right. So when the negative does happen, it just, it's kind of a, like a head turn as yeah. to what? why are you so mean? <laughs> you don't have to be Why mean. are you the way that you are? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, the more that you stay in poker, and I'm sure like when it comes to your experience at the Poker Go studio, I'm sure most people were inherently 
really pleasant to be around. And yeah, I would say like 90% of the people were like perfectly Tell us about the 10. Tell us about the 10 right now. The 10% were down bad in his regs. There were infinite yeah. makeup that needed mm -hmm. a W. So I'm not going to... Def I'm definitely not going to give names. Oh, <laughs> oh, That's off the record content. Right. Yes. All right. I'll get it um, later. But the ten, there are there were ten percent. I would say that um, for us is like a bit of a reality, or just I wouldn't say a reality check, just a reminder that like you know being picked out as like the only woman because during that entire series, um, Cherish was the only woman in event one, only other woman in event one, and then Michelle. Um, Yashua Chen was the only woman in event two. And then in every other event in the PLO series, I was the only other woman. Wow. There, which is pretty ridiculous. Yeah. So you're representing the entire community. PLO. But I know, <laughs> that's the thing. I know that there's other PLO, like mid stakes, higher stakes mm -hmm. um, PLO players out there. Like I know them personally. Right. Like, mm -hmm. So. So let, me ask you, them, yeah, so let me ask you a question. What barriers do you think keep um, f more amateurs, so sp specifically women, from taking part in these bigger buy-in events? I'm honestly not, like, specifically the ones that I know, they're actually pros, not amateurs. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that's, because there's a lot of, like... Or pros and pros as, and well, yeah, as well. Well, like, because not even just the women, like, I also know, like, mid-stakes uh, PLO regs that I've, like, traveled and played with, too, that I wasn't sure why they weren't out there when they're, like, definitely good enough to play in it. Mm -hmm. Could have been any number of reasons, if it's yeah. just travel reasons, if it's just they wanted, this was the first series and no one knew really how it was going to turn out. Mm -hmm. Kind of like have to take a leap of faith, kind of like you did, right? Right, like, right. Yeah, just, yeah. Like, and you know, just, just get so out there and, and sometimes good things happen when you do that. Yeah, oh, I mean, I saw yeah. the series back when it first posted in like October or November, and I still wasn't sure between Vegas and Florida as to where I was going to go. If I right. had moved to Florida, I probably wouldn't have come. Right, exactly. Yeah, because I would say for sure the price point is a deterrent for most in the mid-stakes arena because when you get to the higher stakes, especially in a specialized game like PLO, you would expect there to be less quote unquote dead money, so to speak, yeah. which then makes the mid stakes players feel like they're the ones that are losing in the field. Mm -hmm. And then it makes taking that shot so much harder, especially when it's a price point that is relatively painful by saying that a 10 K if you're playing five, five PLO could potentially be like 20 buy-ins. Yeah. And now you're taking this massive shot where now you have to sell and try to convince that. Okay. That, that's a, yeah, that's like, a very good point. Like, I think that I might be winning in this field, but I'm not even entirely sure. But the experience is definitely worth a ton, right, you know. Right. And how would you say that your feelings about your own game and way that you see things changed based off of taking part in so many of these higher stakes PLO events, even though it was only the first series that you played? I mean, it was soft <laughs> yeah, let's go. Go. i bet you that 10 percent was part of the reason mm -hmm. right <laughs> I mean, so i mean this is a little bit of a sidetrack but my, the only common things i have to say about that 10 percent is that yes. um they were i guess in like the prestigious community of the higher stakes so they communicate in a little bit of a different way to probably not just me, but like anybody that's like newer to that community. Mm -hmm. So maybe not like, they see it as a little bit of a exclusive community. So anybody right. that's new to there, they're gonna to talk to you. There's like, definitely an in-group, out-group. 10% exactly. stop being scum. Right, right. So, <laughs> but I will say this though, that the, my initial impression before I walked into the Poker Go studio, that was my expectation is that the Poker Go studio was going to be a lot like that, that it was going to be kind of like an exclusive studio only mm -hmm. for high rollers. And, you know, how, and I didn't get that impression at all. It's, it's like, great in there, right? Like yeah, what was your always, overall experience? Yeah, like everyone there? always talks about it, like how amazing the Poker Go studio is, mm -hmm. which is part of the reason I had an expectation of it being like a little bit of like prestigious and like right. elitist, elitist you know. exactly. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't like that at all. Like no. it's, it was amazing. It was like really a nice studio, but like in a good way. Right, like, exactly. Like, Especially with poker being such a game where we want to include Feeling that elitist type of aura is definitely off-putting exactly, and a deterrent to even trying yeah. to get in there in the first yeah. place. So I've played at the um, King's Lounge multiple times uh, during the series, and I would get more of like an elitist kind yeah. of feeling from mm -hmm. there where like, you know, you have like that wall a little bit around with like the super comfy chair. I mean, no one's going to should be complaining about comfy chairs, but it's <laughs> a little bit of that elitist it's feeling. Too nice. <laughs> yeah. it's too nice. yeah. Yeah. I like this. No, I, I played I, I played once at Poker Ghost too. I played the uh, the, the Run Good uh, Pro 
Instagram. And and yeah, it was a very similar experience. I was like, I'm wow, I'm at the Pogo studio is playing, like I don't know what to expect. And and it was just it was very comfortable. It was like, you know, everything was done perfect. Like the dealers were great, the floor is great, yeah. just like the way that the whole thing was ran was was amazing and it was just it was just fun to be there right right, sure. right yeah. yeah i think a lot of the times too when you're jumping into a new venture so to speak it's very easy to get that mental framework that you're stepping into a place that you don't feel like you belong yeah, exactly. but then when you actually get there and realize that the people are super nice and it is inclusive and it's just a upscaled environment that is breeding a fun social place exactly. for a high stakes poker tournament mm -hmm. right. you start to kind of feel that pressure sort of wear off where it's only a mental thing and it's yeah, you're just like, i do you. belong here and i i do yeah right yeah, for sure and some of the initial pictures that they had where they were showing like super celebrities and things like that that also <laughs> made it feel a little right, you know, exclusive yeah. and whatnot yeah, yeah. but i also played in a couple satellites that they had the days before which also made it super duper that, easy at the studio so. at the studio yeah oh yeah that's amazing because like you kind of get a studio. feel for so the environment as a whole. They exactly. were running satellites into into the events. I didn't. I didn't really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. Yeah. So, and for, I think that they were still doing that even for the U.S. Open. They are. Yeah. yeah. They had yeah. three of them for the USPO. Yeah, yeah. They do it for the first two days, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. They run satellites, and then it starts on Thursday. Oh, yeah. perfect. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. They were mm -hmm. trying to do satellites actually during the series also for like the event before, but I don't think that really ended up working out because he didn't like get the word out enough. And I know one did run. Did it? One did run. One um, PLO, I think it was PLO. Oh no, you know what? Never mind. That would have been Monday night. Never mind. I take it back. <laughs> if it did, I missed it because I would have loved to play it. No, I'm pretty sure it was Monday night. Have you had any experience of playing on a live stream? No, I have not. Okay, because for FTs, for those, you would have been on live stream. Yes, and I'm not a huge fan of that at all. <laughs> <laughs> Is it because? Uh, well, I know you said you, you, you sometimes you uh, get anxiety about you know, speaking publicly. Is it, is it the same kind of thing, or is it that you don't want your strategy to be the vault? Definitely both. Yeah. Um, more the second than the first, actually, okay. but mm -hmm. definitely both. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just like you, you're really putting yourself out there, and it's just like, okay, now people can, you know, next time they play with you, they can hey, they have footage on you. Yeah, I mean, it's like a reverse examine. free roll. It's like, why would you want to give away mm -hmm. free information about your hand history. And mm -hmm. that was part of the, actually the reason that I late reg. For the experience. Yeah, I was just, I was just about to experience. ask you that. You late regged all the events, right? Yeah, so. Oh yeah, tell us the, the strategy into, into late reg. Yeah, so I think most people know that like, if you're plus EV in a tournament, if you think you have an edge, then you should be regging on time. I mm -hmm. think most Yeah, the highest ROI would be on time. Exactly, mm -hmm. right, right. Um, so a lot of reasons that I ended up late regging. The first event, I actually was planning on regging on time, but I promised somebody that I was going to bring them something, and I ended up being 50. That's a little bit different of a story. Different <laughs> yeah. story. Very, very uh, yeah, discreet about. <laughs> <laughs> we won't get into that. No. But I promised somebody I was going to bring them some things, and the place that I went to, so I, I promised someone I was going to bring them cookies, but the cookie place that I went to ended up taking way too freaking long. And they, but they were so... Damn you, Crumble. <laughs> no, it was... Um, it's a local place. I forget. It's, I'm going to advertise for them. It's yep. like Cindy's Cakes, Cans, Cookies or something. It's a local place. But they're so oh, super nice. You know, it's like this... These two people that own this little shop and mm -hmm. they're being really nice to me and <laughs> making these cookies in front of me and boxing them up and whatever. So I couldn't like be mad at them. You right. know? So, <laughs> so I was just like 15 minutes late and I was like, okay, if I'm going to be 15 minutes late, I'll just be two hours late. Whatever. No big deal. Um, Time that, is a construct. <laughs> um, and so that turn tournament ended up working out fine. And then I feel like, A, I don't have that much of an edge over the field anyways, maybe a small edge. The, they're posting all of the table seats um, for initial registrations for everybody so I could do at least like a little bit of digging into all of the players because mm -hmm. I probably know I don't follow the um, series probably as I don't follow Poker Go quite as much as most people do especially because it's mostly no mm -hmm. I do watch the um, PLO tournaments but I don't there are worse some like holder players out there too and things like that yeah. so I could at least do like a little bit of digging on some of the players mm -hmm. um, and then I also do have a day job, um, and my um, they, my team 
said that I could take the whole week off if I wanted to, That's but I great. also didn't want to like burden them with that and then have to be on. You work, you work like a normal uh, like nine to five, Monday through Friday yeah, I do. kind of wait, job. Wait, wait. Okay. So your team said, you know what, you could take the week off and go gamble in some nice things. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> That's amazing. You're like, yo, you guys, you take somebody to peas. Yeah, you know what, all that neurology research that you just yeah. put that to the side and you go gamble. <laughs> they did, but I didn't want to put the stress on myself of having to be on call then right. and things like that. Yeah, yeah. So I'd rather just take the half day and you know be less stressed out over that's because so. right of course yeah that makes sense that's awesome so then you uh yeah so you you came in to so when you late regged um like how many how many blinds you come in with uh 40 yep. 40 okay is that, that that's is fine. so max late regging that is 40? piles that, yeah that, yeah <laughs> right. that's i mean good. is it piles in a game where it just goes open three back call all in call <laughs> well it turns into piles <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> one double up away from victory yeah, yeah. I don't know, what do you mean no nah, it's true just gotta <laughs> well I, I don't so do you do you play hold'em at all no so, so i have not played hold'em in i can actually look but I think <laughs> it's something like seven ish eight ish years except wow. for last month during the charity series was the first time i had played hold'em in forever and were you like where the hell are all my cards <laughs> you must you need to things. get into the main event yearly people say that no and... no you gotta get in there <laughs> so that's I mean... yeah that that i kind of like i feel like plo players that play mostly plo will it, if they are going to play Hold'em, then they take a couple shots in like some big like just WSOP events because w- the risk reward is there. I will say I did chop the charity series event. Let's go. <laughs> okay, see, but, maybe but you have a future in No Limit Hold'em. <laughs> but I Come back to back. us. <laughs> I mean, it, no, okay. it sounds like you should just be playing the main event and the win 10K every year. <laughs> that it, many people say that. And, dude, yeah. These are really good events. Really, really good So it's really a charity series events. event. I'll just play the charity they're, series event. I like that. <laughs> Honestly, they're the same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To be quite honest with you, man, you should just chop the main event. event charity series of the World Series and then give that money away. Uh, you know what's good. You know good you could do with that? Eight million dollars is a lot. Ten. 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 <laughs> chop well, it up, maybe you know? this year. Yeah. Well, is there any specific forever. reason why you transitioned from No Limit to PLO? I mean, probably the same as 90% of the people. Just that feels kind of boring. Bored with, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people, like the first hand or two that they play PLO, they never go back. Yeah, <laughs> I love PLO. <laughs> Although mm-hmm. the first, um, like, Omaha type uh, World Series event I played in was the 1500 PLO 8 back in 2013, and I did cash in it. Nice. Oh, all right. Mm-hmm. See? First. Well, and you got into 08 just kind of as a byproduct of it? Yeah. Like you're a fan of PLO and PLO 8? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I actually like PLO 8 probably more than PLO, even though I probably don't play as much, because I don't play online. So. Mm. Mm-hmm. It, well, it's a, it's a split pot game, so you, can, so you and your <laughs> opponent under, can both win. It's an under, no, no, it's an underrated game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so everyone always complains about uh, chop pots and things like that, but it's definitely underrated. Yeah, I actually love that game. I moved to North Carolina and that was literally the only game they ran five days a week or four days a week. And I was like, okay, I guess I play PLO eight now. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, it's just an amazing game. There's just, there's just no games. Like if it would be great if like it was spread yeah. around town here. Cause I actually love it. it, it it's interesting because like with, with like PLO it's, it's uh, you know, harder to find, uh, resources probably right is when it comes to like studying like when you when it's no limit hold them there's there's stuff everywhere you can go to the solve for why training Sol- yeah so, right yeah. exactly you go to solve, <laughs> solve, solve for y.io and get yourself there's getting to be a lot more and more plo yeah. Is there, yeah. Which shall not be in the <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, that's there, right. are no right. right. there are no PLO resources out there. Yeah. Unfortunately, we all live under a rock. Yeah, I, I, yeah. So I was just wondering. I guess I won't, don't have to get into too many details of your like study habits and how you. Uh, oh, that's not but, what I meant. I meant right. for people. Yeah, like, for maybe people. a couple. <laughs> <laughs> it is a terrible reason. Yeah. I, I want to stay Switzerland. So. <laughs> Uh, well is there anything else you want to add talk about uh what what do you have coming up next um i'm definitely going to play the 10k plo and that is when next week that is next week where's that uh Oh, the, the, yeah. It's at the US Open. The USPO oh, is okay. mostly no limit, and then there's a couple PLO. Is there only there's one? There's a 10K PLO and a 15K PLO. Yeah, so there's two PLO And events. the 15K, I'm probably not going to play. 
probably like 50 50. We'll yep. see. Yeah, you, we'll come see. on. Are you, come uh, on, are really? You, are you, sell, are you going to sell for these? Or are you? Well, so the funny thing about selling, I forget if I mentioned this already. So after that first post, it like had right. a surprising number of like responses and things mm -hmm. like that. So then for the 10K, I posted asking and literally the only people that responded to me were Schwan and one of my other friends, which, okay, so I ended up playing it anyways. Um, and then I posted again. Like, so I cashed in that one. Mm -hmm. So then I posted again and still no one replied. So I still have no idea where I stand in regards to people having interest. I, well, I think, I think the main thing is just you just put it out there and, and let people, you know, I, I mark it up like 1.5. <laughs> <laughs> isn't 1.8 the number? 1.8. Yeah. 1.8. Yeah. yeah. Start at 1.8, and then if you get it at 1.5, you're doing good. You know. I mean, okay. I could still just have 100. percent That's myself. always a, yeah. You know <laughs> yeah. what? Just if just you know go you're gonna it. win the tournament, you should do that. <laughs> right. Sure. Exactly. If you don't think you're gonna win the tournament, you shouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. it's just how you, <laughs> yeah. You know. It's really more of a just a mental it, confidence it is, booster. Yeah. It, so. it, yeah. And it's interesting, like you say, like uh, like because. I, I'll sell like pieces, but like usually to friends, like never like to the public. That's exactly like, just it. like out to the public. Like, mm -hmm. and what are they gonna say? Because exactly. like I'm I'm thinking about putting together like a you know a WSOP package and then and then, and then just you know throwing it out there and seeing. We'll get. But well, I've never done. Like I'll, like, I'll get you set up. Don't worry. Conrad, I'll yes, get you set up. please, because Conrad is like the he just. I look at a post and it's just like, oh, Conrad <laughs> put in his story. He's like, I'm selling to this 10K at this markup. And he's like, I'm selling 50%. And then like five seconds later, it's like, all right, 20, 20 left. And then five seconds later, sold out. I'm just like, how the hell? We could get you guys actually that? on stakings. Um, I can hit up Tyler. And if you guys want to try to do something there, um, yeah. figure it out. All right. Stephanie, think? this episode has been an absolute pleasure. It's a breath of fresh air. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, you were great. You were absolutely great. And Thank good you. luck out there. I, I want to see you with a, holding the trophy at the end. Yes. So. Yeah. <laughs> win a bracelet this year. Win a PLO yeah. bracelet. Let's, see. Let's go. Win the 25 guy. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again for watching us, everybody. We will be back. What's today, guys? Friday, so Monday. Oh, so we will be back on Monday to get it popping, of course. Who knows if Berkey will be here? He's. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Who knows if Moonclaw will be here? He's speaking with his <laughs> spiritual advisors still. You know, who knows? Thanks for rocking with us. We out. Taylor Swift, baby. Woo! Taylor Swift! <laughs>